Die Hard 2 continues in just after and under 10 minutes after Anglia News. New alert over radon gas levels in Northamptonshire. Man dies after being hit by a train at Kettering. And the Buccaneer bomber gets ready to say goodbye in Bedfordshire. Good evening. Thousands of workers in Northamptonshire could be at risk from dangerous levels of cancer-causing radon gas because employers are not taking action to protect their workforce. The National Radiological Protection Board says that only one in ten companies in affected areas, including Northamptonshire, have carried out radon tests. At Northampton General Hospital, they take the risk posed by radon extremely seriously. They're amongst the first hospitals in the country to install preventative measures to protect both staff and patients. In danger zones, ducts have been fitted to suck up the radioactive gas, which is then pumped out into the atmosphere by extractor fans. Radon levels have been reduced to a quarter of the original readings, well within the safety requirements. Radon is an invisible, naturally occurring radioactive gas, and breathed in, it can increase the chances of lung cancer. Why? Well, radon itself has a short half-life and decays into solid particles which lodge in the inside of the lung and can deliver a high radiation dose to the lung, thereby causing the cancer. But a report published today by the official watchdog body suggests that some employers are ignoring the issue. Only 10% have applied for the radon testing kits. The report warns that in some hot spots, radon has become the primary source of radiation at work. Cathy McNair. A man died this afternoon when he was hit by a train as he crossed the line between platforms at Kettering Railway Station in Northamptonshire. He's believed to have been hit seconds after pushing a disabled person across the track in a wheelchair. Police were called to the station late this afternoon. The area was cordoned off while the tracks were cleared. British Transport Police are refusing to comment further, but it's believed that the man had pushed the wheelchair across the tracks to the opposite platform and was returning to pick up his luggage when he was hit by the train. He's not yet been identified. National Heritage Secretary Peter Brook said in Cambridge tonight that change in broadcasting was inevitable and he warned that organisations which didn't adapt wouldn't survive. Mr Brook was addressing the Royal Television Society's biennial conference in which its leaders are discussing major changes in the industry. The National Heritage Secretary, Peter Brook, the government minister with the responsibility for broadcasting, was in Cambridge to deliver a speech at a time when TV faces radical change and challenge. ITV companies could soon face the risk of takeover bids, the future of the BBC is under consideration, and satellite television is seeking to make strides. Mr Brook praised the improvements made by the BBC in efficiency recently. Without those changes, the BBC might need to be considered from a very different perspective. We might now, or in the future, find ourselves contemplating, rather sadly, the demise of a dinosaur. Organisations which cannot adapt to changing circumstances will not survive. The importance of the BBC makes this an overwhelmingly disconcerting prospect. Mr Brooks said the question of the ownership of ITV companies had to be decided in the coming months but he gave no hint whether he favoured a moratorium on takeover bids for the companies. Earlier, John Simpson, BBC foreign affairs editor, opened the conference with an analysis of TV news. Brought up in Suffolk, he made it clear that he didn't want Anglia Television to be the victim of a takeover. Well, you see, I'm a great uh, advocate and supporter of Anglia Television, and so whatever's good for Anglia I would like, and whatever's bad for it I don't want. I'd hate to see a, a company like Anglia or a company, uh, a smaller company, uh, losing its identity. I think the most important thing we've got in regional television in this country is its regional quality. What he liked to see, he said, was people who felt they had a connection with their local broadcasting company. That was important and should be kept. Finally, the RAF is preparing to say goodbye to one of its longest serving aircraft in Bedfordshire this weekend. It's the Buccaneer bomber which came into service over 30 years ago. But like everywhere else, time marches on in the Air Force, and even though it's still popular with its crews, the Buccaneer is being withdrawn. Its last public flight will be at the Cranfield Air Show on Sunday.
Its shape distinctive, the roar from its Rolls-Royce jets deafening, a buccaneer took to grey Bedfordshire skies this morning, an old stager preparing for the final curtain. After 32 years, the buccaneer, the RAF's last operational bomber, is retiring and will make its last public flight at Sunday's Cranfield Air Show. It entered service in 1961, first with the Navy. Its role was as a low-level attack aircraft, and in its day was admired for its stability, aerodynamics and electronics. Technologies moved on, but the admiration and affection remain. It's a very popular aircraft. Uh, mainly the guys that have flown it have enjoyed it. Uh, for the pilot side of things, it isn't the fly-by-wire. They manually fly the, the aircraft throughout, and for the navigator, a lot of it's stopwatch and map. With uh, Tornado nowadays, a lot of that's computer orientated. In its long RAF service, the Buccaneer only saw action once in the recent Gulf War. The aircraft and the pilot who topped the bill on Sunday played a part in that conflict. Yeah, we were tested against a target just south of Baghdad. Uh, having designated for the tornadoes, we carried out our own attack and the aircraft was successful in uh, destroying an Iraqi aircraft on the ground. So 30 or so years on, still an effective uh, aircraft? Still very effective. Certainly in the Gulf, it was um, more than a match for some of its more modern counterparts. Time and the tornado have finally caught up with the Buccaneer. There's no place now for a bomber, pure and simple. The RAF's multi-role aircraft will replace it fully from April next year. They'll be at Cranfield on Sunday along with other famous planes. But the day will belong to the old workhorse, a classic aircraft flying into history. Jerry Harmer. And that's it this Thursday evening. There are more Anglia News bulletins throughout the day tomorrow, starting at quarter past six in the morning. Till then, good night. Now the Anglia weather forecast. Thundery showers will die away slowly overnight and it'll turn misty in places by morning. Tomorrow will start dull with some patchy rain, but most places will become brighter in the afternoon. After a misty start, Saturday will be a bright day with sunny periods and light winds. Framed for murder and finding prison life a little unappealing. I don't think there's a golf course here. Two ex-cops break out and take the law into their own hands. threatened by two maniacs. Kurt Russell and Sylvester Stallone. Tango and Cash, Saturday 9.20 on Anglia. In cell block H at 5 to midnight, there's a struggle for the position of top dog. First, Bruce Willis has got a struggle of his own in the conclusion of Die Hard 2.